call Marine. Just tell her we're sorry, but the uh, not the something happened with the when you went by. I don't know. It, it fell down. over and then it broke. Yeah, something okay. broke in there. Noise. That old devil's busy. I don't know what happened though. It just don't worry, we'll fix it. <coughs> Notice it says in verse one, everyone together. Therefore, see, we have this minute. Okay, everybody there? No. What channel? Second Corinthians four. It's on the screen. All right. Here we go. Everybody, verse one. Therefore, see, we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Amen? All right. Uh, you know how you watch a certain series, and you'll come and it will say, on, the previ on previous episodes, right? Okay. So, in previous episodes... We had on the winning side, amen? We're on the winning side. It doesn't matter what happened here. I mean, we know we're on the winning side. Uh, the devil, he don't like what's going on. He don't like people being saved and baptized and all of that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're on the winning side. God's people said. Amen. 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 And we are more than conquerors, right? More than conquerors through him that loved us. In uh, uh, Romans chapter 8. You know, and he goes through all of those things. Death, height, you know, persecution, all of those things. You see, when we die, it's just a promotion, amen? amen. We're headed up to glory. See, the world, everything's backwards for the world. This is their heaven. Did That's you know right. that? Amen. That's right. And then they go to hell. They burn Okay? For us, we have a little suffering here, but we're going to heaven. We're going to glory. So, we have the opposite of what is going on with the world. And so, and a message I want to get across here is that, you know, ministry isn't just for some guy that stands in a pulpit and preaches. Every one of you have a personal ministry. You know that? You know, this table over here, and out there, the track wreck. I mean, the track wreck isn't just for preachers and deacons and, and trustees. The track wreck is for every soul, everybody in here, and we're going to gather, and then we rejoice in anyone who received Christ, and then we, so we, we, it's called we gather and then we scatter, amen? We gather and we scatter. All right. Where'd you go this week? Did you go to Yuma this week? No, I think actually no, I went to Phoenix. Phoenix? Yeah, okay. Days. Mm -hmm. All right, we got over seven million people in this state, folks. Over seven million people in this state. And I guarantee you, there's enough sinners for all the soul winners. Amen. Amen. And God has some someone for you to read. For instance. For instance. Let me give you a ministry that the Lord brought to me. And what is the... I, I'm telling you, you could be a personal welcome wagon. Right? Okay? All right, Phyllis. I'm looking at you. You're kind of looking at me like, oh, what's he going to say next? <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. Julie and Don. Kay. Cassandra. Kelson. Uh... Lewis and Norma, Mark, you have a little community you live in, right? You've told me about it. Certain parts of it are more receptive than others, right? Here's a ministry that we all should have. It's called new move-ins around your house, okay? And we had a couple move in right across the street from us. And... I mean, I'm busy, and I try to I go over and help, and, and, and so I met this lady, and uh, she, Brother Bob, this lady is, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's Japanese. She, she didn't sound like she was uh, <clears throat> Korean or Filipino. She sounded 
more Japanese, and, and so, but her husband, her husband is in charge of the ammo over at Davis Monthan Air Force Base. And he's the one that's in charge of loading those A-10s with their ammo. And he has this license plate in the front that says ammo. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I like ammo, amen? Okay? This is my Christian ammo, amen? And we don't want to go out without it. So I ask people, do you have a track? You know? So a long life's way, make sure you have a track. Right? We had uh, a man come to the service. Uh, what was his name? Jason, right, Bob? Yes. Jason, Wednesday night, because Shelly was out by pray for Shelly too. She was at a, a, a bus stop. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is God has a ministry for all of you. In Acts 8 4, the Bible says they, they, they went every, they scattered everywhere preaching the word. That's what they did. All right, Matthew 20. 20 to 28. What did the Lord Jesus say? He said, well, which one? You know, we want to, and, and over in Mark, we, we find that they what came up to Jesus and said, well, which one of us? We want to be greatest in the kingdom of God. What did the Lord Jesus, he had the perfect answer, did he not? He said, he said, uh, and, and, and it's funny, I had to laugh when, when the Lord Jesus said, not mine to give. He says, uh, 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 are, uh, shall, uh, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism I shall be baptized with? Hey, we are able. They had no idea what the Lord Jesus would go through, the infinite suffering that he would go through for Amen. you and I, right? Amen. Shedding his rich, red, royal, righteous, redemptive blood for you and I. And how he uh, uh, went into that grave and came out, bounced out of that grave victorious over sin and death and hell. We are more than conquerors because he is more than a conqueror. He overcame the world. He said, you're going to have tribulation, but I've overcome the world. Okay? I know it doesn't seem like it. We're going to lose some battles, but we're going to win the war. Amen? And so, he says, yes, we are able. <clears throat> he says, notice it says here, he not shall be, whosoever will be great among you, let him be your what? Minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Are you willing to be a servant for Jesus? Amen. Are you willing to humble yourself and do menial tasks and help people who are in trouble? I hope you are. Our Lord Jesus said, minister, ministering, and that word minister is, is actually the word for deacon, and deacon means actually a servant. I know that there are, are men in, in our churches that have the, quote, title deacon, and they think, it's, well, it's a big title of authority. No, it isn't. It's a title of service. It's a title of humility. We are to serve. Serve the pastor and serve the church. That's what a true deacon is. And that's what a minister is. And so God has something for all of us. There is a niche provided for every man. Each makes his contribution in God's great plan. Let no one feel forgotten in that vast scheme, however small and hidden your life may seem. Some must go forth to battle. Some mind the camp. Some cross the mighty billows. Some tend the lamp. And keep their lonely vigil till break of day to guide some storm-tossed vessel upon its way. Some serve their generation. Some those unborn. Some lose their lives in secret like buried corn. Some sow their fields with weeping, some reap the, at the grain, and fill their barns with plenty from others' pain. Dear Master, thy appointments are sweet, but if I'm, if I'm but for thy service a vessel meet, in labors more abundant or out of sight, thine openings and shuttings are always right. Your time is short, beloved. Next, uh, First Peter talks about ministering one to another. <coughs> First of all, I want you to notice there's a receiving. You know, look what Paul said. He said, and it's, by the way, we're going to go through this chapter. That's kind of what we're doing here. <clears throat> seeing, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy. The only reason that you're here today, the only reason that we're sucking God's air, and that we have a noticeable brain wave, right, and that we're able to move, <clears throat> is by the mercy of God. 
His mercy, like you prayed this morning, His mercy endureth forever. Thank God for His mercy. For those of us who know Christ especially, how thankful we ought to be. Paul said, I'm the chiefest of sinners, right? Okay. Amen. Now, for my birthday, I got this crazy thing called a fitness walk, right? I mean, where's my wife? Where are you? In the kid. Oh, she's with the kid, that's right. So they gave me this fitness thing, you know, and it tells you uh, how many steps you got. I got 2,000 steps already today. I don't know how I got that many. All right? <laughs> I came home last night, right? And I came in the door, and I, I finally looked down. You and I are going to get extra credit. Yeah. I came in and I said, "Well, honey," I said, "My my this this crazy, I don't know if it's demonic, but it, it, it's healthy, right? Do you, do you like these things?" Uh, I give your do. heart rate. I mean, it gets disgusting. It feels disgusting underneath. It does. I have to wash my hands, and it just kind of gross. Kinda. Anyway, so my <laughs> wife says, "No, we got that for you. You're gonna wear it." <laughs> okay. Oh no. So it's kind of tight. Anyway. The so it, it 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 monitors your sleep. Yep. So it tells you uh, your blood oxygen, mm -hmm. the blood oxygen level. But I came in last night and I looked down there and I kind of pressed the thing. That I did 8,002 steps or something like that. Noise. <laughs> 8,002 steps. And my wife, you know, she, she bikes, she can bike 25 miles. Okay, I could never do that. I could bike maybe 250 yards, maybe. <laughs> anyway, and she didn't even look up. She was looking, reading her Bible or something, and she didn't even look up. I said, yeah, I had, over eight, I had 8,022 steps. She said, you're supposed to have 10,000 a day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for a moment. Wait a minute, I said. We were doing stairs. <laughs> so that counts double, right? Oh, yes. When you're doing stairs. <laughs> One time at Joe's, it right? measured 20,000 for me. What? One time I was working oh, wow. on Neuro and That's it measured 20,000. I mean, 8,000 <laughs> yesterday. I did a lot of walking yesterday. I, I thought, I could, man, I'm pretty good. You're supposed to do 10,000, lazy bum. And so then it starts talking back at me. You know, Bert and I went and had, what did we have yesterday, Bert? Chimichanga we had. We each got a little chimichanga, right? Over at Roses. You been to Roses? Kind of a neat place. And it went over there. It told me how many calories I was eating. <laughs> and I was burning or whatever. I, the calories you're burning. <laughs> you need to be vegan. <laughs> Stop, telling me. The, the Stop Apple, telling me what to do. The Apple Watch measures your EKG. Yes, right. <laughs> Just so like then there's a, an app on here, you know, that tells me, okay, it's called Run Fit. And so it, it monitors me. Now here, hang on. I'm gonna tell you how much sleep I got. You were talking about sleep last night? Okay, so it gives you your sleep record. And it tells you how many hours you have light sleep, how many hours you have deep sleep. Okay, this isn't doing so good anyway. All right, so <coughs> now, why do I tell you that? You know what? The Lord is watching everything we do. Not some stupid watch. He knows exactly what we're doing. He knows every breath that we take. He knows about every uh, 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 heartbeat. He knows. And we're going to give an account to him. And each one of us has a ministry, whether you like it or not. Now, maybe your ministry is, 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 is pretty fruitless. Dr. Rice wrote this, The time is short. If thou wouldest work for God, it must be now. If thou wouldest win the garland for thy brow, redeem the time. With his reward he comes, he tarries not. His day is near. When men least look for him, will he be here? Prepare for him. And so there's a receiving, beloved. And when we receive Christ and, 
and uh, as we receive him, we receive his mercy, God uh, then has a something for us to do. Now, if God didn't have something for you to do, he would have taken you home, right? Right mm -hmm. after you got saved. <clears throat> so he's got something for you to do. <clears throat> I talk with men all the time. People all the time. They say, well, I almost died here. I almost died there. God was merciful. I want to show you this picture. This came across me, and we're going we're gonna to hear from this man. Uh, Which one? Mitsuo Fushida. <coughs> oh, this one? Yeah, just oh, kind of. This one? There he is. Oh, yep. Hold on a second. That's read. right. That one? All right, so we're going to see this man's testimony. Uh... This is uh, De Shazer on the right. This is a preacher in the middle. Okay. You might wonder, well, who's this guy here? Who's this uh, Asian man, the Oriental fellow? That is the man, that's the cat, Captain Fushida, who led the attack on Pearl Harbor, beloved. Yeah, down there in the lower right corner, you get it big. Yeah, there you go. I think it. So, <clears throat> and he's the one that cried, Torah, 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 tiger, tiger, tiger. He was born in the year of the tiger. And they destroyed those ships. And we heard yesterday, that guy was crazy. <laughs> we, we came across a guy, and he was an environmentalist, and he was talking about the god of the Japanese and how, I don't know, anyway. But he said, God was merciful to us, because if they had, had gotten all of the ships, there was oil deposits in the ships and we would have destroyed our oil or something. I don't know, I couldn't get, quite get that. Anyway, so they went back victorious. He met the emperor who they, they thought was a god, right? And he became a, a national celebrity. And God spared his life. He had uh, 21 bullet holes in his plane when he left <coughs> Pearl Harbor. All right, they tried to shoot him down. And he brought back the pictures, and you'll see that time. behind you is the picture that he drew of the ships burning in Pearl Harbor. You ever, how many have been to Pearl Harbor? I've been to Pearl Harbor. It's, it's sobering. It really is. Well, this man, he goes over... And he gives a testimony about how he should have died here, and he should have died there. He was on the top of a carrier, and uh, an explosion. He went up and broke both of his ankles. And then after we, uh, uh, after we dropped the atom bombs, he went and inspected the damage, and he's the only one who didn't die from radioactive poison. Okay, I mean God's mercy was on him. Okay. And all right, we're here, Noreen. Yeah, the, the the you can't watch it. Sorry. Yeah, the uh, the um, microphone went out. Apologize, but you can listen. And so this man went over. He he couldn't understand why he was escaping death by a few inches or a few minutes. But then after the war. He came off of uh, a subway, and someone handed him a tract. And it was by that man on the right. He can't see him very well. Uh, and he was at Pearl Harbor, his shazer. And he was captured, and he went into a Japanese war camp, prison camp. And he, got, he found Christ there. He got a Bible, and he got saved. <coughs> He wrote a tract, and that tract, somebody handed this man that tract. These guys were mortal enemies. And I'll tell you what really got him saved is his fellow men who were taken into the uh, prison camps in America, he was waiting to hear how awful they were treated. But instead, they found the testimony that they were treated wonderfully. Not only were they treated wonderfully, but there was a missionary lady there whose family the Japanese had killed. And she treated this, these prisoners 
with sacrificial love. He could not understand that. This man, Mitsuo, Mitsuo Fushida, received Christ through the testimony. And you're not even going to believe this. He became an evangelist. This is the man who led the attack on Pearl Heart. Mainstream media doesn't give you that, do they? Nope. And he became a missionary and he gave a testimony. He said, I will never forget. He said, I'll never forget the first soul that I led to Christ when I preached in America. He said, it was one of my own countrymen. <clears throat> and from there, thousands came to Christ. Simply amazing. Now, why do I say that? Because Paul says here in verse 1, <clears throat> let's read it again. Therefore, seeing we, we have, have this ministry, ministry we have received mercy, mercy, we faint not. I find a lot of Christians and a lot of preachers are fainting. Oh, yeah. Not only fainting, some of them are killing themselves. It's sad. Now, look, I know that we have a crisis of depression across this country. But I'm going to tell you something. No child of God ought to get so discouraged. And we're going to, by the way, uh, better things to come. Okay? Paul thought, well, let's just give you a foretaste here. Look what he says. He's, and verse 8. Read it with me. Everyone? We are troubled on every side. Verse 8. Ready? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted but not, not forsaken, forsaken. Cast, cast down, down but not destroyed. destroyed. You know what that means? That means knocked down, but not knocked out. Amen? Amen. Old Dr. Hiles, he preached a message on that. Knocked down, but not knocked out. But a lot of Christians are knocked out. A lot of preachers were knocked out. And they just fold up and go, go off into the sunset. I don't know what they're doing. Dr drinking a beer in a tavern or whatever they're doing. Playing shuffleboard. Listen, we don't have much time left. He says, redeem the time. He says, having received mercy, we faint not. Now, he could have given up. Let me tell you something. You think that was easy for him to come, Fushida, to come to America and preach the gospel? Oh, that blankety blank jack. They were hated. As you remember, many Japanese citizens were interred, right? during that time but he knew he knew that Christ had set him free <clears throat> he was determined to let people know now notice next you could yeah, yeah. thank you wonderful we're going to hear from him tonight we're actually going to hear from Fushida tonight next there's a renouncing to disown reject notice it says in verse 2 everybody let's read it but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Okay? So we need to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty and the hidden things of darkness. Right? Those two things. Renounce the hidden things of darkness. You know, it, it, it really grieves me to see... Christians getting, I mean, so involved with this this Halloween garbage. <laughs> you know? I mean, let's celebrate the devil, right? <clears throat> oh, it's just innocent fun. No, it's not innocent fun. All right? It's Satan's holiday. We shouldn't really have anything to do with it. We can, we can celebrate the fall. We can celebrate God's goodness. But let's be careful this time of year. Hidden things of darkness, hidden things of dishonesty. But I want you to see here, verse 3. Everybody, next. But if our gospel, we'll talk more about that. Everyone, verse 3. This is so important. Ready? If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen? God has us here for a reason. Why? Because the gospel is hid. Underneath, it's, where is it? It's hidden underneath all of the world's garbage. You can't even talk to kids anymore. They got these, here, here here's what they got. Let me show you what they got. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to How you doing? It's like 
like talking to uh, the Walking Dead or something. You know, Bert and I were coming down Stone after we were done, and all these uh, police cars were out here, and some idiot had been racing down, and smashed into another car. The other car was. I mean, this is right across the street over here. And tow trucks were there trying to get the cars. And I wanted to witness to them, but they wouldn't let us through anyway. Uh, because people aren't paying attention. They're, they're taken captive by these devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. These devices, and that device, and TVs, and movies, and all of that. Videos. And, oh, i got to watch this video. Well, not while you're driving, you know. And now, these cars, I don't know if you know it, these cars have got screens built into them in the middle. And they're playing videos on those screens while they're driving, while they're looking at down there. I mean, it's crazy. Just crazy. Well, it's hid. The gospel be hid. It's hid because so few are preaching the gospel of Christ. And so few are living it. And notice it says here, verse 4, everybody. Yeah, let's read it together. Ready? In, In whom, whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Everyone? For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants. For these, these uh, televangelists and all of these uh, uh, egomaniacal uh, 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 nutcases. They don't preach Christ, they preach themselves. Well, I have to make sure that my brand gets out there. <laughs> Your brand? Yeah. And they have to build themselves up rather than Jesus. We have lost this whole idea of ministry humbling ourselves and being a servant. The God of the world has blinded. People are blind out there. It's up to us to go forth with the gospel and shine the gospel into their dark hearts. And so, beloved, so few uh, are really living it, and souls are blind. Satan, the God of this world, has many devices. We need to pray and pray and pray as we go. Next. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, just stay back there. We'll, we'll stop there. We'll, we'll do this tonight. Yeah, go back? Go back, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let me share with you if I could, and uh, you can take, get that picture out. Something wonderful happened on 9-11. A lot of people don't know it, but Lieutenant Michael Day was at his office on Staten Island looking out over lower Manhattan. Yeah, there it is. I don't know if you can get that any bigger. Yeah, up there. Yep, there it is. The great 9-11 maritime rescue. Are you aware of this? How many are aware of this? <clears throat> Nobody. That's what I thought. It happened to come in the latest Reader's Digest, and, and this was fascinating to me. <clears throat> that <clears throat> See, the people, when, when, of course, the towers were hit, and then the towers came down, the people <clears throat> rushed to the southern tip of Manhattan. And it couldn't, couldn't get out because the, the, the bridges were blocked, right? So what did they do? Well, this man, this lieutenant in the Coast Guard who was in charge of, of, of overseeing all the ships, you see, he sent out, he said here, uh, let me just share this. He said, he said, over the hours ahead, Day and his colleagues and the Sandy Hook Pilots Association, with the specially licensed captains who could help larger vessels safely get in and out of harbor, would help orchestrate the largest maritime evacuation in world history, even larger than the famous British rescue at Dunkirk. With no plan and little direction, they would cobble together a makeshift arm a civilian armada of fishing vessels, pleasure yachts, tugboats. That was funny because some of the, some of the uh, maritime officers uh, down, down the way, uh, there was uh, <clears throat> wealthy yachts, and they, they actually literally took the yachts and, uh, 
it was something. They evacuated an estimated 500 to 600,000 people in a matter of hours. And so the step next, you can look, just this next picture, yeah. Yeah, see if we can get Okay, so you see, you can see this, that, that all these ferries, and some of these ferries are, should carry, uh, uh, these are some of the smaller ones actually, the bigger ones carry five to 5,000 people, and they were carrying instead 7,000 people, and they all got together next, I think there's another picture there, yeah, here they came, and so he got on the horn and he said, we need all the ships we can possibly get, you go back again, I think, and they, they ferried them over, <clears throat> and uh, the volunteer crews began to hang banners uh, where they were going, Brooklyn, Staten, but mostly they just found people eager to leave uh, Manhattan. All I wanted to do was get off that island, said a teacher at a high school that was located in the shadow of the towers. <clears throat> it was like the last, being on the last lifeboat on the Titanic. <laughs> and then he went back in, this lieutenant went back in, he said, most of all, the dark of the night near Ground Zero, with the power off and the fires burning all around, he remembers the chirping emergency distress signals from scores of firefighters buried in the rubble. In a day where his efforts had helped rescue hundreds of thousands, the equivalent population of a good-sized city, the sound that haunts him is that of all the people who weren't saved. Why do we say this? Because we're involved in the greatest rescue operation in the history of the world. Reaching the last and final soul before Jesus shouts <coughs> and comes back for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. One here, one there. A Samantha here. A John Williams there. A Brother Bert. That's what it's all about. Get out there in your own personal ministry. And listen, you know, I, I, I'm not stupid. I mean, just because you just because you're not going and knocking on doors with us, that doesn't mean that many wonderful things aren't taking place. When you go to the doctor and you leave a, a tract, right? And when you go to the store, you know, Kelson works at uh, Safeway, or he did, right? I mean, take take the gospel tracts to the food store. Leave them in the in the restroom if you go in the restroom, or in the waiting room when you go to the doctor. Talk to somebody. If somebody looks discouraged, encourage them and say, you know what, Jesus has a better life for you. He said, I've come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. Amen. Let's rejoice. And let's give thanks to God. We're part of the greatest rescue operation. Thank God for, for this lieutenant. We've read about so many heroes. The largest of its kind in history remains largely unknown. God bless those, those boats. Amen. That got those people off that island. Must be a part of that. You know what? The world's burning right now. Hell is burning. Let's reach souls for Jesus Christ. Let's pray, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you for this time. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And we just rejoice today, Lord, in how good you've been to us. Now, Lord, help us to reach another soul for you. Help us to give thanks to you. The gospel's clear. It's plain. Christ receiveth sinful men. Praise God for that. May we be willing to go forth in this time, in these moments before you come. Lord, we know that America has collapsed already morally. It's collapsed already spiritually. And now it's going to collapse financially. Help us to be ready. And to continue to rejoice, to be of good cheer in these days of small t tribulation before the big tribulation. And help us to be found faithful. I wonder as our heads are bowed, nobody's looking around. You say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure about my personal salvation, but I'd like to be sure. Pray for me. Somebody like that? Anybody? All right, maybe you're a Christian. You say, you know what? I didn't realize God has a ministry for me. He does. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to get busy now. I'm going to do what the Bible says and reach some souls for Christ. You say, pray for me that I would be able to reach somebody for Christ. How many will say that? <laughs> yes. Amen. The rest of you aren't interested?
Come on. Amen. Get with it. Souls are dying. Father in heaven, help us now, I pray. Reach somebody for you. Be a shining light for Jesus. Help us to be good ministers of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Let's sing this great song. This was my favorite song.